today I'm excited to share with you Parse Hebrew. I've helped thousands of students with Parse Greek and have been so gratified to do so. And now I'm really happy that I can also help students who are learning Biblical Hebrew. So here is Parse Hebrew. If you use Parse Greek, you'll feel a lot of similarity as the user interface is very similar. I have uh, keyed the app to all of the top uh, intro biblical Hebrew textbooks that are out there. So you'll see all of those as you scroll through. You'll also be familiar with the fact that I make it so that you could study by frequency of lexical occurrence. So you can study by frequency and of course choose the words that are most frequent in the Hebrew Bible down to those that are the least frequent. I've also created a number of predefined sets. So you can study the numerals, the pronouns, a strong verb paradigm. So uh, typically in almost every textbook they use katal. A couple others have used other strong verb forms, but I've chosen katal. So every single uh, way katal could appear, even though it doesn't appear as frequently in the Hebrew Bible, but I have them all in there. All of the minor stems, those stems that we don't uh, necessarily learn in the first semester, but definitely in uh, more advanced Hebrew classes, you'll learn minor stems. There's also the segalit nouns, hollow verbs, the biconsonantal or geminate verbs, and I've also included the paradigm hayah, which is a triply weak verb, because of course you have the hay in both the first and third, and the yod in the second or the middle there. So I've created a number of predefined sets for uh, testing yourself in, uh, in other ways. If we just go back here and jump to one example. I'll scroll down here to Pratico and Van Pelt. And again, this should be if you've used Parse Greek, similar to what you would expect. I've keyed the vocabulary to the chapters in all of the textbooks. And as you choose, of course, it will uh, add to the bottom there, whichever chapters you might want to choose. And then I have also keyed it to the grammar as it is learned through the textbook with little summaries or descriptions from each chapter here. So absolute nouns, absolute adjectives. This is how Pratico and Van Pelt uh, slowly work through the grammar. And so, as you create, ask, or sorry, as you check these off, it combines with the vocabulary you chose. And um, if I click, you see only one now. That's because there's only one uh, pronoun within these vocabulary choices. But if I add this, you can see how it's slowly being added up. So again, just like you would expect if you are a Parse Greek user, but for Biblical Hebrew. If I click on next here, you'll see there's just a, a couple of uh, differences, again from Parse Greek, and that is the fa because of the fact that Biblical Hebrew verbs um, are quite diverse in stems, or the binyan, as well as the number of conjugations. So I've added the ability to further drill down in that way. So I'll put this back up to all here. You'll see the 67 that were chosen. But I'm going to go back and uh, give you an example from verbs again. So if I come over here and then choose the strong verb paradigm, you'll see there's 216 forms, uh, but you can further narrow those down. So for instance, if you are focusing on hyphiel or if you're focusing on one of the other stems, the cal stem, you see you can narrow it down and you can further refine that by conjugation. So if you wanted to focus in on the imperfect forms, for instance, or you wanted perhaps all of the stems, but only in the imperfect. So you can further refine your verb, uh, especially your verb forms in your testing. I'm just gonna click next here and quickly show you uh, some of the slight differences that you'll find, again, if you were a Parse Greek user. If not, this is might be all new to you. Um, so within the quiz um, window, you have how many cards are remaining. You have, of course, the word at the very top that you're being tested on. And uh, just in smaller gray, because this is not necessarily about learning vocabulary, but it can help reinforce it, I just give a short gloss there. 
and uh, you can click on the word and it'll give you any sort of hint that might be relevant. So because we're using the strong verb, again, it just says strong, but if this were a hollow verb or a um, verb that had an olive in the third radical, it would say something like that. So I give those hints there if you want them. And then of course it's just testing you and asking you to choose. So uh, you can choose one and move on to the next. If you want to jump back, for instance, uh, as your answers come here, I can click on that and it'll bring it back to there. Uh, if you want some help, uh, you can put the 50-50, which means it'll, uh, it'll reduce your choices. Um, and then you can now choose from one that's remaining. The little question button here will just bring up a sheet of the strong verb paradigm for you to take a look at. You can obviously zoom in there um, uh, in terms of help for verbs. If you just don't know it, you can skip it with the skip button down here and it'll just go to show you what the correct answers were. And then you could either redo it with the redo button or you can move to the next. And if I hit next, you see now that because you didn't answer it, it was considered answered incorrectly. And that's the incorrect and correct count at the top there. I want to show you one more uh, thing here, which is also a difference between, again, parse Greek and parse Hebrew. And I'm gonna go over and just choose a uh, hollow verb, choose the hollow verbs, and I'll go over to the quiz. Um, so there are times when there are identical forms. This is normal, uh, same with Parse Greek, and so you're tested on both. And you'll see when those occur, it'll say one of two. If you get it right, it'll show you the second one. If you get it wrong, it just considers both incorrect. I'm just gonna skip to the next one. I gotta get to one. So you see here, at the bottom here, that there are other forms. So in the Hebrew Bible, uh, words sometimes are spelt slightly differently. There may be a different, slightly different vowel pointings, or there may, might be a slight differences in vowel forms. In this case here, you see um, that you have some slight differences. Uh, for instance, the vav is included here uh, with the holom vowel, and so, and, and that means that it occurs that way in the Hebrew Bible at times. Its spelling is slightly different, but it is the same uh, morphological uh, parsing. And so what I've done with Parse Hebrew is the form that occurs most frequently is what is shown to you. And then the other forms in which the spelling and particularly uh, the vowel patterns may differ slightly, um, they're put below and separated out. And so that's another difference uh, between Parse Hebrew and Parse Greek. So that's a really quick rundown of Parse Hebrew. Again, really excited to release this to the world and uh, help more students as they're learning Biblical Hebrew. And thanks for your patronage.